we are producing like the rate of data that we're producing. Somebody has done this. this I cannot for the life of me uh, remember the numbers. So I'm going to look for it. Uh, data get in was it, it was a reference from a, from a Silicon Valley. It's a fun episode. Good old Peter Gregory. I wish he hadn't died. And he, he died. The actor who plays Peter Gregory died after the first series. He was such a great actor. If you haven't seen Silicon Valley, you need to go watch it. It's really great. Um, but, but we're we're creating so much data. And thank God data is cheap and the, it seems like the technology on data storage is, is outpacing um, everything else. Um, no, he died in real life. Yeah, it was sad. Super, super great actor too. Um, now what was his name? I should probably, I should probably pay him in memorial because he's one of the best actors of all time. I mean, his character was so amazing. He was definitely autistic, but he was just so amazing. Um, the late actor, let's see, late season, the late actor played the character Peter Gregory. The Irving of Venture Capitals, who was the first to invest in the Fledging Company. Okay. Yeah. Evan Welch, Christopher, there he is, December 2nd, 2013. Um, anyway, so we're talking about Data Geddon. Data Geddon uh, is this idea that, that we're producing too much data. And the reason I brought it up is because I'm, I'm like conflicted about whether I should blog or I should vlog, video log, and do live streaming. I. I'm a little afraid to calculate the amount of data I'm generating by live streaming all day, every day. And even if I, you know, cut out, I know other vloggers who do this and they just put it onto YouTube directly. So there's no curation or editing. And I'm, I'm not a fan of that. I'm more a fan of, of marking them and doing this slight bit of extra work to, especially now with Twitch, which is so awesome of highlighting the stuff that you want to put out there and give it a name and some tags and everything. So it can be found. And so that's kind of my plan going forward. So I've only been doing this less than a month. I mean, I've done videos before, but never live streaming. But the amount of data that I must be generating, I mean, that that's that's my mind boggling to me. <laughs> I mean, how much data are we generating? Um, so, um, and can we keep up? And I, I think we can. I think, I think, you know, they, they're riffing off compression algorithms, but you know they've they've got um, they've got storage working at the molecular level now. They have um, crystal storage in the works, which will again that'll be at the molecular level. So I don't think storage is ever going to be a problem for humanity. I think the technology is, uh, for storage is outpacing uh, even the incredible amount of data that we are sending over the internet. And thankfully, right now, the internet, for most of us, is the limiting factor, right? So we still are only sending 4K video, which is relatively, it's still, it's big, but it's relatively small compared to, you know, um, the amount of data that we're going to be able to transfer um, very soon with, you know, Internet 2 or whatever. So there's going to be lots of data to store. So I, I think my conclusion, I think I just talked myself through that, Um yeah, four terabyte hard hard drives are less than a hundred bucks. Think about that for a second. You know, I remember I was alive in. I mean, I bought a Bernoulli disc in the nineties, and it was huge. And it was forty megabytes. I my Mac, my Mac Pro, I kid you not, um, in the time had thirty megabytes total. Thirty megabytes. Think about that. It was the most. It was the most up and coming computer of its time. And at 30 megabytes. And that was 97. So what, 20-ish years ago, 22 years ago. So if you if you calculate the rate of I mean CPU performance is a different issue, right? Um, we've hit the you know Moore's law block on that, but we have not come close to maxing the technology for storage. And yeah, if you can get a four terabyte hard drive now. Um, then you're, yeah, you know, it's, it's not going to be an issue. I, I, I really think because there's nothing limiting it. There's no physical limitation. And then you got quantum computing, which is just going to through shoot, shoot CPU power through the roof. So the, 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 you know, the, the, there's the graphs on the rate of technology, um, improvement and how fast and how exponential our technology improvement is now. It's really hard to keep up, but, um, 
if you are concerned about you know damaging the world because you're producing too much data i'm the kind of guy who has to ask myself what if everybody did this before i before i buy into it if every single human being streamed 24 7 um wow what a great russian name thanks for the fall um what would happen you know, I am. If everybody streamed twenty four seven, I'm not, and I'm not ruling out that as a possibility. Um, what would happen? What would happen to our world? Would it would it blow our carbon footprint out of the, out of the water? Would it? You know, I, I I think the more damaging scenario is what if everybody used a cryptocurrency? Um, that's not sustainable. I actually had a senior executive vice president who was in a presentation we had. Um, and frankly, one of the world's best authorities on crypto, I won't say his name because I don't think he wants to be added, but he was, um, if he comes on the stream, sometimes he's moved, he's in a different country now. Um, but, um, oh, Kuntz, KB Kuntz has left. I didn't recognize that she joined. Anyway, um, he, uh, uh, he came and he was talking, he was, he was, he was, um, pushing crypto and, um, What's the word that he used? He doesn't like calling it crypto. Um, consensus algorithm. Was it consensus algorithms code? So the, the underlying technology behind crypto, which allows us to have you know decentralization, all that jazz, which is like what Ethereum uses to make distributed apps, dApps. Um, and what Brave, by the way, uses inside for, you know, rewarding you for looking at ads if you wish to. Um, anyway, so there was a, a very practical... Um, senior project manager uh, executive in the in the in the group, and I hope she joins the stream sometime. She's fantastic, and she just she was just, you know listening, very open minded. She asked the question. She goes, "If everyone in the world was using crypto for all their currency, would there be enough power to power all the servers required for that?" And um, so. That was a pretty interesting question. Up until that moment, I was kind of a, I'd kind of been convinced. And by the way, he was very convincing. He was, he'd been a salesman at, our, at Oracle. Um, and he's a wonderful, wonderful person. I really, really liked him. And, you know, and he was really into it. He was, you know, he, this guy had been, you know, paid $4,000 for keynotes and all kind of thing. But um, the question, that question kind of, stumbled him and I, I don't think he had ever thought of it before and so I th it's, this comes back to the thing I was talking about last night it's like what if everybody did it we need to ask ourselves that in technology a lot so oh, that, um, but so yeah what if everybody did it so Electron if everybody made their app into an Electron app we would need 10 times more RAM there's no way we could do it but the people who are asking her making it are making it because they're asking the other question what can I get away with well I can get away with my make, making my app in Electron because you know people just have to deal with it <laughs> it's not my fault they don't have computers with enough RAM so and I think that might be the thinking with the Bitcoin you know they're looking at all the positives they're not asking basic questions like well what if everybody used crypto if everybody used cryptocurrency there, would there be enough energy in the world to power the systems necessary for that? And um, I have to sort of ask the same question for normal currency. What's the power cost for the computer power from banks, servers, etc.? It's a good, you know what? That's see, this is this is the kind of place where I I I, I get really distracted by intellectual questions. I guess um, you know I I I'm curious. I'm just I'm really curious. What if what if everybody did it? You know, you could ask the question now very, very seriously. What if everyone had an internet connection? They still don't. 62% of the world still have no internet access. 62%. So you can still ask the question, what if everybody had an internet access? And that, that is a real serious question because that's the whole digital divide thing. And that, that goes down, um, a really interesting rabbit hole that I really think needs to be uh, discussed more. Um, 
it really pisses me off when people put really crazy stuff in their blog that doesn't need to be like for example they have it like moving things around and they 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 sacrifice uh viewability and printability and all kinds of things because they want their page to scroll or they want some parallax effect on their blog when they throw away usability for half the world more than half the world and that that this annoys me personally a better world i think for the most part yeah yeah i you know it's the interesting question i mean the, the philosophical angle on that is what if you took all of the the power and energy of all of the systems for banking and all of the servers and all of the ecosystem around banking trillions of dollars of industry right and imagine a future where that none of that existed the only thing that existed was some sort of crypto and the servers necessary to run that and and would it be more or would it be less a better world i think yeah for the access to data is always one of the those double-edged swords yeah it is it really is and do we need it right so i think it's funny that the more people ask these kind of questions um tolstoy is a famous one um and they reflect particularly over 50 like me um they end up concluding that simplicity is the answer and they, a lot of times they throw out tech all the way i mean several years ago i thought about just going and living on the beach and surfing all the time and just giving it all up because what's it about but then you have this great tool for connecting people and ideas and stuff so it's it's not it's got to be part of whatever plan that we're in if we are <laughs> anyway um silicon valley so yeah so this is where data again was about and we i think we talked through it um and i see you know what i i like that we did that in fact i'm gonna make a little blog about that so i talked through an issue and i've come to a conclusion based on that and i don't like not having resolutions to my own issues and i love more science behind it but um so i can say something like and i this is interesting because i can tend to blog my conclusions and not so much um what I've been blogging before has been more the arrival at the conclusion. So the blog is all over the place. It's me evaluating and making my own case where I think having a conversation with you or my wife, frankly, we are constantly talking about this kind of stuff. I'm really blessed to have her as a wife. Um, she's just as interested in these topics. 